tread lightly. Keep it safe. Play hard. Welcome back to Love Day 4 by 4 Adventure Park for the 7th Annual Riverland Challenge. The Riverland Challenge track is a motocross style track designed a bit bigger for four wheel drives. It's a harebrained scheme that Tony Waitley cooks up, just something to go out there and plunder cars and cause damage and tip cars over and give the crowd something to look at. Got 40 entrants in the Riverland Challenge this year so it's getting bigger and better. Each class is pretty well represented, there's a lot of dollars spent in the open class cars and as usual there's a lot of guys that come out in the Bushman class cars and give it absolute what for and drive it like they stole it. We've got everything from L-plate teenage drivers, which is the minimum, you must have at least your L-plates to be able to compete. Lady drivers out there, there's a couple of girl teams out there. One of them drives around, she does the timekeeping, she drives around in the most ill-prepared car though. That'll be my daughter Chloe, but that's alright. Couldn't drive a knife into a thing of butter. G'day, I'm Stuart, I'm here at Love Day 4x4 Adventures. Got a 60 series Land Cruiser that I'm smashing around the track out here, having a blast, awesome atmosphere, good times. You don't need a big four wheel drive with lots of money spent on it to come out here and have a great time. Just get something that runs and come out here and give it a go. I don't even know what happened. I just remember being on my side and then I laughed and got out and giggled. As per usual, rollovers seem to be topping the chart. Now, Snuffy's gone over for a couple of times, which between the two drivers in the one car, I think they're pretty even at about three each over the last two or three years. Toby's gone out there and rolled his little orange car on his first lap, so he decided to go out there and drive his Gen 3 V8 and land that on the step up and break that too. So we've been pulling that apart, fixing it, and that's still goosed. Tony's made a few changes to the track. We've taken a couple of the hills out, smoothed a few things, changed a few jumps, made it a bit slippery in places, which has taken people by surprise at the start of the weekend. Format of the weekend, we run four heats on the Saturday, hopefully run another four heats on the Sunday. From there, we do a knockout. You know, top four of each points go down, then the top two run in the final. Hopefully, we've got four cars in each class to run a final. It's always great to run the event. We're getting interstate competitors coming over. We've still got you know, Maddie and Kate have come over from Melbourne. You know, there's a lot more interest from the interstate guys, especially as you know, Tony runs the Oztruck Extreme stuff at the interstate four-wheel drive shows, and that's starting to get a name over there. So hopefully the next couple of comps, we should start to get a few more Victorian teams coming over. So look forward to that. We have a Brisbane team come through. They're relations of one of the guys here, so they've made the trip down, towed their Odea down from Brisbane and they're out there giving it what for, so it's good to see them, there's a long way to come. G'day, Max Peterson's my name, all the way from Bris Vegas, brother of Luke Peterson from Black Betty, and I uh, watched him enough times on TV, thought I'd come down and try and beat him. Not very successful at this point, but it's good to be here. These guys put on a heck of a show. It's, it's nice to try and come down here and not break a truck. Had a bunch of fun, looking forward to tonight's events. It's gonna be good. Here at Love Day, having a great time. Finally got to nav today, first time naving. Driver roll, just after I said I'll never forgive when they roll. And yeah, having a great time. Everyone should come up.
Viewers, this is our last promo for the two biggest off-road 4x4 extreme events of the year. So please ensure that you don't miss your chance to get to these unique, professional and amazing displays. First up is the Tough Dog Tough Truck Challenge, booked in for April 12 to 14 at the amazing property near Milbradale in New South Wales. You can expect to see Australia's toughest four-wheel drive vehicles go head to head on the toughest tracks imaginable. The event is family friendly, there's plenty of on-site parking, camping and entertainment and stages run day and night over the weekend. The next event, just one week later, is Australia Extreme on April 20 at the Loveday 4x4 Park in South Australia. Have you ever wondered what the world record is for riding a quad bike with six passengers? What about the world's longest jump in a side-by-side -side buggy? How far could you go doing a wheel stand in reverse on a quad or even doing it forwards in a monster truck? All this and more will be on display in one massive action-packed afternoon when Australia Extreme brings you live world record action culminating in the craziest of all, how far a prime mover will fly. Don't miss Australia Extreme April 20 at the Loveday 4x4 Park in South Australia. Here we are in the remote desert. Probably one of the things we really have to do is of course prep our vehicle. But I think a lot of people lose sight of the fact that when they're preparing, they keep adding this and keep adding that. And probably if we have a bit of a look in here, we've got weight coming out of our ears. Now this old project Nissan that we've been doing up, you've seen it in some of the series, standard alloy bull bar. It's now fully equipped up with all the steel gear. As you can see the back is pretty fully loaded, probably not overloaded, but it hasn't got much room left. The big thing was the weight. I weighed this vehicle when we started, quite a few weeks ago before we started setting it up. It was about 2,240 kilos, I think it was exact. And it's now just weighing in at about just over 3,000. So before you know it, we're at about three quarters of a tonne of added weight from pretty much a stock vehicle up to ready to go across the Simpson or go on a really good outback trip. So just always be aware of that. With that, of course, you need good tyres to run along with it, and in particular the suspension. We've had to do a little bit of upgrading on this old machine to sort of get it ready to take all that sort of weight. You'll soon start losing some of that weight on the trip, of course, as you eat and you lose water and, and other things, but it's something that uh, you shouldn't lose sight of anyway. Keep a very close eye on what you are putting in the vehicle. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three ton towing and the awesome 470 Newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. Now who doesn't want more power? And I bet that most of you with diesels have your hands in the air. DP Chip is not a snack food, it's the real deal. And simply modifies the engine fuel injection parameters to increase performance to a measurable difference of up to 35% more power and torque and up to 10% better economy. DP Chip, the only diesel power chip with a five year warranty, 24 seven tech support and user adjustability. For more information on DP Chip diesel power, call 02 1022 or visit dpchip.com. When the going gets tough, when you're bogged down deep, or when your mates reach out for help, Mean Mother is your first choice for recovery gear and winches. From the Tough as Nails Edge Series, built for passionate four-wheel drivers and packed with quality components and features, to the over-engineered Boss Series, offering superior reliability, endurance and efficiency under the toughest conditions, Mean Mother has a winch for all applications. Check out meanmother.com.au and explore your limits with a Mean Mother winch, the mother of all winches.
magnificent, isn't it? I reckon the Simpson Desert is definitely one of my top five four-wheel drive destinations in Australia, and I think it's a place that every four-wheel driver needs to get to. The only thing to be aware of though, like most of the best destinations in Australia, it's a big long drive to get here. And for those of us pushing 4A, one of the things we have to start contending with at our age is back trouble. Now the problem with a lot of seats in vehicles is they're really built for comfort. There's very little support for the back and particularly for your spine. So what tends to happen is that because the seat itself hasn't got a lot of support in it, your back muscles are basically supporting your spine and what that can eventually lead to is some lower back trouble. Now the last big outback trip I did, I think I had about three or four physio sessions to get over it. So I wasn't going to make that mistake again and I was talking to Dave from Kmart about it and he made a recommendation to put some Recaro seats into the vehicle which is what I did about a week ago and I really cannot get over the difference. The additional support these seats give you, you, you really need to drive them for a week to experience them, they're fantastic. What you tend to find is when you sit in the seat, you don't necessarily think straight away, oh what a comfortable seat this is. The thing is when you've been in there for a few days, you'll really, really notice the difference and that big difference is you'll get out at the end of the day and you'll feel as fresh as you did at the beginning of the day. They really are a sensational investment in looking after your lower back. G'day, I'm Tony Waitley and welcome to the Riverland 4x4 Challenge. It's been an awesome weekend. We had heaps of carnage. There must be something in this rolling over because Snuffy rolled it and then did the fastest lap. Toby tipped it over a couple of times and then did lap records. Toby also went out there in his GQ patrol and one that he'd built in the school holidays all by himself and did lap record time straight up first run. Second run around actually snapped the front ball joint clean off its housing. With all the camaraderie around the place, heaps of people jumped in, gave a hand and replaced it, put it all back in place and get it working. Toby went out and actually took the weekend out in the open class. Scott and Frank mustered racing all weekend, man. They were just pinning it to it, doing a great job. I thought they had nothing left. And in the finals, come back, both them and Toby took six seconds off their time so they were pulling in the heats to only be half a second apart in the finals. What an amazing race. The Bushman's guys, as usual, out there just smashing it around. Team Princess, $100 car, smashing it around, having a great time. We had Rob Edge dropped into a third place in the Bushman's class. Black Betty, he's been around for a long time, ripped into it, had a few problems here and there. He got a second place because his car was just running really, really bad. First in the Bushman's class went to Team Subaru. Haven't been back for a couple of years. They came back and the thing in the first heat was a bit of a joke. But in the final, it was an absolute mean machine out there, just flogging it around. The boys rebuilt it around about four or five times over the weekend. They had a whole truckload of spares there. They were covered in grease, having a great time. So they well and truly deserve to win that. I'm Rory, uh, we're here at Love Day. Went out for the first couple of heats, trying to ramp it up. We've got a lap time each time until we finally decided to disassemble one of my coilovers and pull the top out of the coilover, causing the shot to completely fall out and smash the radiator. So that ended up DNFing us for the whole weekend. But it's been a great time so far. There's a lot of good, solid competition out there today. A fair few rollovers. Snuffy's rolled over at least twice now. There's a couple other cars that have decided to lay on their side. I'll be looking forward to a great day tomorrow with a heap of action pack racing. Thank you very much, Full Drive Team, for coming out here and supporting the event, and thanks to all the sponsors. This is the ARB Forby, so Simon's brought a heap of these over, you know, a carload of them full, giving them out for prizes for the kids and whatever other crazy scheme he comes up for prizes, so I've you know, seen a few of these, they go around with our little DP Chippy dolls that we've got floating around for our fundraisers. Weather is awesome, 
25, 30 degrees, a little bit of wind, sun's out. It's absolutely beautiful. What more can you expect? That's it. Look forward to seeing a bit more action today. Look forward to seeing everyone fire up in the finals. Look forward to seeing enough cars still to run in the finals and give it absolutely what for. So, Alan, this is only my third time into the Simpson Desert, but I believe you were here 30 years ago, I think you were saying earlier? Yep, absolutely, and it was quite an adventure in those days. We're looking at what looks like now a hyperspatial bypass out there. When we came through, it was basically a series of wheel ruts running through the scrub, and the main navigation was looking for those little concrete things with the little metal plaques on top, which had numbers on them that told you basically where you were. So I can't even imagine doing that. Most of my friends sort of consider me to be navigationally challenged, I think is the word. <laughs> Since things like the HEMA Navigator came along, I've got a lot of confidence travelling out here with good maps and so forth. But the thought of basically just following those surveyor points, which aren't that easy to find, would have been a pretty exciting thing to do back then. It was. It was a lot of fun. I tell you, the other things that I've noticed from doing this trip is, when we did it the first time, the cars we had were things like bar treads and road track majors. We've got these amazing modern day tyres from both Mickey Thompson and Cooper with silicon rubber, and they just don't get any flats. It, it is incredible. I mean, that road that we drove out from Mount Dare, heading out to Dalhousie, I mean, some of the rocks on that road were just, <sighs> just beyond belief. I mean, it was just Huge. incredible that we were able to drive along there and only yeah. suffer one fatality, basically. It was pretty impressive. Pretty it was impressive. very impressive, absolutely. But the other big thing I noticed travelling this time is, apart from just the navigation and the tyres and things, is just simply having these GPSs on board. The confidence it gives you to travel is remarkable. You know exactly where you are at any time and with things like satellite phones and HF radios, we're pretty, pretty damn safe. Yeah, absolutely. You know, with a well-prepared vehicle, the right equipment and, you know, some preparation in terms of food, clothing, all these sorts of things, you really can get out here and have a fantastic time, can't you? you? Can. It's just it's a wonderful great. part of the world to be. Yep. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. Do you need more from your four-wheel drive suspension? Designed for Aussie conditions, Superior Engineering has a suspension solution to suit any four-wheel drive. Mix and match from the widest range of specialty suspension components or opt for the latest in spring and dampening technologies. Throw in the widest range of 4x4 suspension accessories and Superior Engineering is your complete 4x4 and suspension specialist. Superior Engineering, it's engineered to be superior. For more information, visit superiorengineering.com.au. Warning, water in fuel is one of the biggest killers of diesel engines. But there is now a unique alarm system available that lets you know when there are dangerous water levels in your fuel system. Water Watch is a simple and effective fuel alarm that offers LED and audible warning signals. Easily fitted, Water Watch is inexpensive insurance for your vehicle. Avoid huge repair costs, ensure your motor runs clean and be warned of any water issues with the innovative Water Watch. For more information, visit waterinddiesel.com.au. Uh, my name's Matt and this is my rig. It's a 2000 model turbo diesel Prado. I've got an ARB bar on it, driving lights. It's got a Safari snorkel, got Mickey Thompson ATZs. Uh, inside there's a UHF, put a genuine Toyota SatNav in it, um, tip the windows, cargo barrier. A bit more on the back, we've got the roof rack, awning off the back and also a telescopic lock that I made up too. Also dual batteries, turbo timer, put a bigger exhaust on it. Future modifications, I'd like to put a winch on it. Other than that, probably just a few little tweaks and adjustments to the draw system in the back that I want to make up, and that's probably about it. The place I'd like to go is the high country. I've been going there since I was a kid. Usually good spots to go at the back of Walhalla as well. 
If you'd like to join us for our next Your Rig trip, then email myself with your details. Each weekly winner takes home a cap and stubby holder courtesy of All Sat Phone, an any sharp edge sharpener and scissors thanks to Keesler Knives, a promo pack courtesy of ARB including Forby the plush toy, a travel mug, a Forby drink bottle, the new ARB cap, a pair of emergency travel socks, the latest ARB jacket, and a set of valve caps to bling your rig. There's an ARB Penrith stubby holder, a pen and cap thanks to Berrimer Diesel and DP Chip, a massive map of Australia, a GDT Simpson Desert map, and Travel Atlas, courtesy of HEMA Maps Australia, a Manel Motors stubby holder, a USB rechargeable torch thanks to Nava, the History of Land Cruiser DVD courtesy of Terrain Tamer, a U-Fix-It windscreen repair kit and tyre ratchet set. There's a copy of Dirt Cop magazine, South Pacific Bow Hunter magazine and Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine. A set of the Australian design expander pegs, an up and go breakfast replacement courtesy of Sanitarium, a set of four wheel drive TV medium stickers, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer and an Australian designed Aussie drink mate. A Black Widow Travelmate tyre repair kit or a Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit. The Electric Blue span set snap strap and it's all neatly packaged up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. Thanks very much for checking out my rig. Thanks to Simon Miranda and 4 Drive TV for organising the day. It's been a great day. In the standard class, out there racing, just your standard road registered car. Plenty of good close racing, third place in that. Glenn Tillingsworth in his Daihatsu Rocky, a bit of a stalwart, been here for quite a while. You know, it's a little car, it's under pad compared to the GQ patrols, but he runs around there very competitively. He got a well-deserved third. Second place went to Rob Oak. Started off in a little yellow Suzuki, so he stepped it up to a 45 Land Cruiser, road registered, roadworthy. He did a great job come in with a second place. First place went straight out to Jared. Jared Sweeney's been running around, he's an everyday party animal, comes up here to everything I have, and it's great to see him out there winning. Put a lot of effort into that car. He spent probably 50 bucks on it. Jared had a ball and he's pretty happy that he's won it. Andrew Nichols took out the jump for cash. He jumped, come down, bone crushing landing off the tabletop, but kept it pinned, launched off the step up for another bone crusher. The car was very, very bent. Guarantees he's gonna be back in April to jump the semi again. He actually did get himself in the finals, but he didn't actually get to run in the finals. But his daughter got into the finals in standard class, Alison, first time out on her L plates. She got out there and she actually took it up to him in the finals, didn't quite get into the places, but hell, great to see a young chick like that out there having a good time. For me, it's probably one of the best events. A few changes made just to make things flow smooth and flow better for me. We need our sponsors to keep events like this going. Great to see Mickey Thompson tyres on board. Mickey Thompson always been behind the Riverland Challenge. This is six years in a row. Light Force chucked in a set of lights, which was great. Stewie from Red Arc, he was running around there flat out. He was another one of our sponsors. Independent battery distributors threw us up a heap of battery vouchers anywhere excavations. Good old blokes, they rock up here, they race snuffy. Tell them that Tony from Love Day sent you, then they might sponsor me even more. Yeah, g'day guys. Coming to a, another finish of a Mickey Thompson Riverland Challenge. My name's Luke Peterson, I'm the driver of Black Betty, my little Hilux. I made the podium, but second place to the CB boys. Ended up with a few dramas. In the grand final, with the fuel issues, it would lean out and wouldn't get enough fuel pressure to the carby. And so I'd lose power. We'd have to hang out for a little while. The fuel would come back up, pressurise up again, and we'd keep going. So I felt like quitting because she just wasn't going too hard, but I just wanted to get across the line. Nevertheless, I had a great weekend, great weather, great people. Good on the CV boys, but we'll be back next time. It's 
great to have four-wheel drive TV here. With that being a big supporter, you know, six years straight four-wheel drive TV, come over here and support all the Love Day events, which is great to see. 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12. Okay, this is seven years we've been here with four-wheel drive TV. I think that's pretty well it. We've had a good weekend. Now I'm going to go back to the bar and relax and put my feet up. Hope you enjoy what you've just watched on four-wheel drive TV. See us all April 20 for Australia Extreme Live. Brand new show, Hitting Love Day. Hello, my name is Paul Harris. This is my Toyota Bandera 86 model comp car. We're at the Four Wheel Drive Sydney show doing a girls exhibition for Kamikaze Club and Tough Dog. We just put the coilovers in it, which are running well. We're going to go coilovers on the back. Commodore V6 Auto, we've put an auto in it and changed most of the suspension underneath. It's all customised and that's about it really. We're trying to keep it as full bodied as possible. It's run well all weekend, except we done a radiator yesterday, the fan just stopped, which was just a power problem. So she got hot and blew a radiator, which we've got just a standard Commodore radiator in it, so it's just a matter of nicking up the wreckers, and five minutes later she's on the road again, or on the track again, I should say. We usually do Willow Glen, to Perry, Masters, and Tough Truck. Next event for us is Tapiri out at Orange, run by the Tapiri Full Drive Club. Looking forward to that, that's the end of November. Well, viewers, thank you for tuning in for another series, another episode of Full Drive TV. I'm Simon Christie. Thank you for watching. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I'll see you next week.